Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Panzer General 2. Right now, General Messerich and his Red Army, trusted group of Red Army partners in crime, have now arrived with a bit of delay in Finland. Now, it was pretty easy for them to travel all the way up there because the last mission, they were just in Leningrad Oblast. I think that's what they, the Russians say, describing the region of Leningrad, now St. Petersburg. And after relieving the 900 day siege and make the Germans retreat, not without a bit of obstacles or bumps in the road, now they are interested to convince the Finns to give up their alliance with the Germans or you know, try to push them into signing the, I guess, uh, peace treaty or ceasefire. Because they were at hostilities, uh, you don't know from the outset because the front there in the Baltic was stabilized for some time. Yeah, and now I guess the best course of action for them, the Russians uh, in the north, is to keep pushing the Germans into Estonia and of course across Finland as well. Try to push the Finns back to the border uh, that they had after the Moscow Treaty uh, in 1940 that basically ended the Winter War. But the Finns themselves didn't think that the war was over, so um, they have termed the I guess conflict that we are right now in as continuation war so it's you know the war has continued without any kind of let up and definitely shows in their preparations in their you know setting up multiple different defensive lines in the east karelia karelia region which kind of is a region between finland and soviet union with a rather large lake in between i think it's called Ladoga which is well known or which I mentioned in the last episode due to the, the lake being frozen providing the Leningrad Leningradians uh, with critical supplies, critical transport of supplies and uh, food through the road of life. Um, for Finland, road of life is basically uh, the road to peace, road to peace, uh, trying to convince the Russians that the losses that is going to be incurred if they invade their country is going to be so high and so expensive and so extraordinary that they would think at least twice about going after the capital of their nation which is Helsinki uh, now the Finns had a couple of things going for them I guess Estonia specifically the city called Narva was defended by a very hardened group of the Germans and Estonians who really fought Russians to a standstill and I heard the Red Army had a lot of trouble in trying to contend or beat back the Germans from Narva region basically opening up Estonia for the reconquest of the Red Army and if Estonia was gone or in the hands of the Soviet Union then I think it would be much easier for the Russians to launch an amphibious attack definitely provides another road of more option of engaging the Finns and it might have proven to be a bit too much for the Finns to defend from the sea. Uh, they had a hard time enough to man the, all the three defensive lines that they had set up across the Karelian Isthmus, which is the small strip of land that lies between Leningrad and the city region that we are now in, uh, Vivorg. Yeah, so that's where we are and we have brought our uh, entirety of the tanks here, which is going to going to a pretty steep makeover so let's see with that out of the way we have kv-85s which i learned after the previous episode that it was actually uh, alternately called as is-1 we have is-2 available now it's going to upgrade unit option yeah here the, the rather uh, similar looking tank so you definitely know that is-1 and is-2 kind of shared it's kind of similar trait, at least from the outset, but you don't really know from the upgrade cost that they suggest it's going to require. 300 is basically, um, yeah, just more than 60% of the tank that is going to be put into the you know, upgrade cost, which is very high. If you consider the KB-142s that some of these tanks are upgraded from, uh, if you want to upgrade from that, I think it might have cost not that much probably uh, less than 100 the difference between the upgrade cost from KV-1 to IS-2 compared to the you know upgrade path between these two units 
So yeah, I mean, I kind of lost out there, but I do believe in Leningrad, I definitely needed the KV-85s, um, which provided me with the enough offensive power so that my Western group was able to hold on despite some of the very hard uh, counterattacks that the Germans had mounted uh, using their own armored elements. Uh, I do believe that this time I will upgrade some of these to IS-2s. I'd like to show you guys um, the new tanks and how they are very effective against you know almost every unit now 12, 21 and 16 but the only thing that i find that is lacking is the amount of ammo that it can carry only four compared to nine um, kv-85 so i mean both tanks have uh, some good things and some drawbacks uh, i do think that is2's advantage is to make it a more of a preferred heavy tank for the red army but I guess in the end, a mix of both units will prove to be the most beneficial. Yeah, so this provide a lot of punch. Um, the candidate for this kind of tank is going to be uh, one that is able to move very fast. Of course, because the overrunning ability of the tanks will make it very attractive, certainly, if it has aggressive maneuver. And I do believe I have such tank case that has both of those traits, uh, which is Miseric. Uh, this is Ruskoi Street Fighter. Yeah, Street Fighter. I don't know whether it's going to be whether the IS2 is going to the benefit the most from, but let's see. Yeah, Messerich. This guy is going to be very useful. Going to be able to travel fast and also will be able to overrun most number of units. So maybe I'm just going to see what other tank cases offer before committing fully into the upgrade path because I think there, I believe there will be another tank that is going to come along uh, so this guy aggressive attack which adds 2 to the offensive ratings so this is going to be 19 and 16 which is basically no slouch so maybe I, I'm going to leave this guy uh, I guess till later and there's one more, oh there's actually two more oh wow okay so I have obtained another tank case which uh, yeah very powerful, very powerful now resilience uh, resilience adds 2 to the, just like, um, what is it, aggressive attack, it has 2 to the defensive readings. So 14 and 12 is going to be 16 and 14. Uh, I think I will be much happier with K85 with that guy, because uh, that guy is sort of a tank that is going to be uh, exposed to a lot of elements, different elements of enemies from many sides. So it has to be able to be ready to shoot at a moment's notice. And yeah, if you are like only limited to four shells, then it's not going to help us uh, in that respect. So, so Maseric definitely gets the upgrade. Yeah, so I hope he's not, yeah, he's not over strength. So even 300 prestige points for upgrade, which is very substantial. Yes. Yeah, so we have IS-2. It has a bit of a lighter complexion, maybe it reflects the better machining or tooling that the Russian heavy tanks are now enjoy. That the vast industrial resources of USSR is now being used to churn out these kind of tanks uh, by the hundreds. Uh, and improving, of course, their uh, technology all the while. And uh, this guy is resilience and this guy. So uh, let's check. Lysenko. Yeah, this is a new tank ace. And this is overwhelming attack. Overwhelming attack, I believe turns all the suppressed damage into uh, real damage so uh, it's a bit different from aggressive attack but sometimes more preferable because it does have a potential for more damage um, but yeah let's see another very maybe even more exciting development right now is that we have T-3485 which is a tank that incorporates the 85 mil of this tank into the frame of T-34 um, T-34 being used uh, as a really versatile platform uh, to the end of the war and this is basically the natural end of the road or I guess evolution for this tank. i be able to going up against you know, any Panzer IV models or revisions, even in a good day be able to scare off some Tigers but of course the Panthers are still a bit better at least in this game than these tanks. Um, but yeah, 17 and 14, I believe in the manual, uh, the unit manual that came with the game, I think it says 15 in terms of hard attack, but I don't know what, but the patch later uh, in trying to balance the Soviet 
against the Germans maybe uh, increases to 17. Which is all good for us because I'm going to upgrade almost uh, all the tanks here that I have, which is not KB-85, into 85 of the T-34 version. Uh, okay, so let's see. Let's start with this guy. 192, very decent. Very decent. So T-43 is going to have to pay a bit more to gain this. Uh, yeah, I have no complaints. Yeah, all of these tanks will be upgraded to 85. I think, you know, T-34-43 was actually used in the Finland campaigns or continuation war, continuing their service into the latter part of the war, but uh, for my purpose, I think I just keep the tanks up to date, at least the, you know, the workhorse of our tank army. Alright, so... Everything has been taken care of. Yeah, so the K85, some of them are going to continue before, you know, the final confrontation with the Germans. They have to spend their time with the... I guess KB-85 was more of a prototype stopgap, but it has served us really well. And 9 shells really do matter um, and when you have a lot of enemies to contend with. So most of the times, even I or you guys wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these two tanks because they you know, seem so similar from the outset, um, including the appearance. Alright, going down further the list, I have Su-85 and it has definitely have its counterpart in the more upgraded version. I think it's the uh, IS means that it's another I Yosef Stalin version of this. I don't know how it actually is an acronym of, but certainly an evolution of the anti-tank, a very impressive tank that sports just huge numbers across the board and it's actually better. 122 is actually better than 152, I don't know why, but perhaps this gun was a rather heavy gun with just a huge shell that destroyed units or damaged units by concussive effect. Um, I mean, it does have a better anti-infantry effect, so maybe it's just more of a high explosive shell that they use or something, but I'm not so sure. But for the anti-tank purposes, um, its original aim, I think this anti-tank is a bit better of great path for this guy. Well, yeah, so 141, I, well, I thought I had some decent amount of prestige, but I have spent it all, basically. Definitely took a chunk of the prestige while upgrading all these tanks. So I need to make a you know pretty hard decisions here. Um, well, first of all, I think you have noticed by now that I have very hard time in trying to deal with certain uh, aspect of this army, which is uh, of course the artillery and the air defense. Uh, I have just complained with no end uh, how ineffective some of these units could be, and you know I think. It's a bit unfair for me to criticize it all the time because apparently in USSR Red Army these guys were in battalions all to themselves. It was actually a part of the guards, I guess, artillery division or battalion consisting of just huge numbers of these Katusha rocket mounted on trucks. And this is more of a weapon that was used in mass. So if I didn't have, if I only use one, each effect is going to be just nil, not really effective at all. So I do want to maybe go all in or just give up uh, using Katrusha's. Um, I'm not so sure. I, it's, I think it's a bit late for me to make up my mind in respect to this. And right now with only one Katrusha, in this game at least, I think I need four more. I think I need five Katrusha's in order to be able to, uh, you know, have the range of close fire support or fire support that is overlapping to show any kind of effectiveness for the Katrushas. So uh, I do regret it, but I need to reassign it because I don't really find any use for it, you know, just bringing around a single unit. Uh, I'm going to probably put the prestige that, I, well, I guess this is not enough, but the next unit I'm going to, you know, try to buy is the artillery. Um, but I don't think I have enough right now. Yeah, I don't think I have enough enough uh, right now, so oh, we'll see. We are going into requisition screen and see. Another unit I'm going to reassign is this 25mm. Of course, I'm going to choose the one with the least amount of experience to reassign it. It's going to take some time. 
Uh, but yeah, it was... I mean, sometimes it does land in a pretty good hitter too, uh, over the duration of the mission, but yeah, I'm rather unimpressed by the 25 mil, even more so in the last mission, where the Luftwaffe was able to just gain so much leverage. Oh, this one, yeah. So this one I'm going to reassign it because uh, you can definitely see with this zero experience that this guy has not seen any action even though it's been part of the army for at least one uh, mission so it means that it didn't really get a lot of usage and uh, yeah i mean the air defense i guess the range is has been basically useless even though i did bring a couple in order to have the overlapping air support or air defense support i don't think uh, i mean bringing even more air defense is going to help any uh, there were some cases where the airplane was accosted by, you know, like more than one air defense, but still really didn't amount to much. So yeah, this unit is, yeah, I mean, I'm going to reassign it in 501. Uh, not bad, not bad. And I have, um, I have seven infantry. I think that took a pretty good amount, seven infantry. And as far as these guys are concerned, I'm going to... I just try to keep them and use the way I did in the last mission, which is to see whether the planes are separated. So to give us a window opportunity to survive at least one turn of air deterrence or interception for at least one turn and able to survive, then I'm going to retire. But because I don't have a lot of artillery, I definitely need uh, the air in order to, you know, gain upper hand against the defensive fence. All right, so let's try to requisition one artillery here. Uh, yeah, it's going to cost a pretty penny. Yeah, so let's see. 312. Okay, so do I have enough to overstrength my units? So 312 is the number, the magic number. And let's see if I can reach the magic number while getting these guys overstrength. Yeah, okay, almost there, 330. So that is probably the maximum that I can expand. Yeah, I have already spent it, okay. All right, now the situation being like this, I probably have to job strength these guys more, the 12. And some of these guys will be able to serve as a, you know impromptu artillery because they're two range guns. So yeah, I mean, no loss there. And uh, let's see if I can overstrength some of these guys. Yeah. So this this guy. Oh yeah, this is a regular guy. Oh man, I wanted to upgrade this guy for the longest time. Uh, let's see if I can upgrade this guy to another engineer or guard cavalry. Uh, yeah, I can. I think I can. 156. Yeah, 12. All right. So I think I have prestige enough to perhaps overstrengthen this guy. No, I can't, but maybe I can do it against the infantry. Some infantry can be... Oh, only the regular guy. Oh, this guy. The regular guy. Yeah, I'm gonna leave the regular guy uh, to its own device or, you know, to regular strength. Okay. Alright, so recon. Fine. Two is fine, I think. Yeah, so do I have any X3 units? Nope, I don't think so. All right, so with all the requisition done and out of the way, let's go into Finland, into the Vivorg or Vipuri region, uh, June 15th, 1944. Yeah, it's just summer now. Uh, I guess it took some time for Meserich to travel all the way up, but it's only like 50 kilometers or so from where it was. I don't know. Probably had to prepare um, to get the shipment of IS-2. He only got one though in the end. Brilliant 13 turns. Oh, a lot of turns. I love it. Uh, pretty generous. Uh, I don't know how difficult this mission would be, but definitely, yeah, definitely not an insubstantial amount of turns for us to achieve a victory. All right, so we come up from a uh, clears. Okay, interesting. A lot of um, well, I mean, it's a pretty similar amount of objectives as last mission, but um, almost all the points here are considered important and are part of the objectives uh, i don't know what this is supposed to be but i think this is supply point that i guess provides prestige for the finish side per turn so i guess this would be advisable to be captured um 
but I don't think this is actually a critical point. So I think if we get these four, then it'll be um, everything will be fine. Of course, it's easier said than done. And we have two prong attack approaching uh, Bipuri. We have a bigger deployment section over here. And this way is a bit blocked by the bridge. So let's go into that. Okay, so we get, let's check out the names of the towns. Kupasari, Justila. I think they pronounce J as the Y. Um, so Bipuri, so this is the town in question. I think this is Gulf of Finland um, airfield. Okay, so this is a critical airfield. And this is the road that eventually lead us to Helsinki. Uh, Vipuri was, I think, important in the fact that it had a yeah, basically highway connecting it to Helsinki. And um, it's also a port city, so I don't know whether that is going to entail. But the Stavkas guy said that Finland is also going to use their navy. Yeah, so I mean, I have to be even careful of the Finland ships, although I haven't really looked up into the unit manual. Uh, I don't think they had any ships though, but I'm sure that the Russians were trying to use their submarines or something in order to disrupt any kind of, you know, the transport to and from Germany to Finland. Uh, so I guess the Finnish Navy was definitely active back then. Um, and I believe that Finland is going to be supplied with German units or the weapons that are supplied by the Germans and they're more powerful that way than what they would have been uh, in 1939 when the Winter War happened. Alright, so let's see, this guy is Masaryk, so he has to travel um, pretty far. So I'm going to put him on the right side of this river, impassable river. And this river, yeah, so right here. And of course, the recon is going to follow it, but let's wait until I put all the weapons down. All the tanks down, this guy. Street Fighter. The Street Fighter is going to uh, be on the forefront on another side or approach to Bipuri. So right here. This guy. Oh yeah, I should really name these guys. Uh, can I name these guys right now? Yeah, okay, sure. Alright, let's get out of that first. And this guy is Street Fighter. So let's just say 85. Just say AK-85 Street Fighter. So uh, SF. Yeah, SF. This guy will be useful in uh, Bipuri as well. This guy will head another uh, group heading toward Bipuri. Alright, so this guy is 117.1 aggressive. Alright, so 117.1 and aggressive attack. Alright, so I probably yeah, would know what it means, although I probably off the hand, I probably forget what it means. Yeah. So aggressive maneuver, AM, AA, aggressive attack. All right. So aggressive attack guy is going to well, I guess they probably take up the center column, and uh, all these guys, yeah, these guys will just follow up. I think the center group will have the most amount of tanks because of each open space. Gets a bit narrow though. Yeah, it does get a bit narrow, so this is a more of an open space than anything. Alright, so let's check out this guy. So my chitch is resilient. I just name it RES. Res. And this guy will... Yeah, just try to support... Not support, but be the partner in crime with Masaryk. Uh, these guys... Aggressive attack. I know this guy. Uh, overwhelming attack. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is OM. Should have done this a bit beforehand. Um, I might lose track of the unit and deploy them where they are not needed. So overwhelming attack is going to be yeah, yeah, going to be. Wait a second. Uh, overwhelming attack means that it's going to come under. I think it's going to be the most effective in the open space. So, well, there is airfield that we need to capture and I cannot forget about this Kupasari on the north. It's kind of removed from the rest of the general direction that the army should travel. Yeah, I give the guy an open field, I guess, to 
you know, wreak havoc. I don't know uh, if I'm making a good choice, but then um, I know where these 85s, T34 85s, you have to go, which is west. Yeah, and at least one more KV85. This guy will accompany, yeah, the tanks here. So three tanks in each group right now. I can add, wow, two more. Although one is actually an anti-tank, so. All right. Um, I think one can station himself over here. Artillery. Artillery will have to follow uh, the group center thing or yeah i think it has to follow group center because this is a bit too narrow strip of land to travel and it might like kind of be isolated outside of the air defense because air defense also needs uh packs to deploy and i'm going to just do that right now before i forget um yeah before i forget so the rest of the air defense only one more going to be i think one should be here yeah the recon um the recon one of them definitely going to be stationed in between the group east and group center and one is going to just have a look at what is going on at the immediate oh wow Lasomi and popovo region all right so the infantry comes um uh, well i mean they have to support the tanks the guard cavalry uh, yeah, I have only one guard cavalry now, so it's a kind of a pseudo recon unit and the weather is nice now It's not like the winter war where the Russians were floundering left and right uh, Having a lot of trouble against the Jaegers and the sissies of uh, Finnish army I believe that are the equivalent of commandos and the hunters with their uh, iconic ski troops had the kind of mobility that the Red Army couldn't match and was definitely isolated and in piecemeal suffered uh, huge numbers. But then now it's a bit different, it's all thawed out and before the bloody season I believe so yeah. Uh, it could change though, I mean June it doesn't really preclude the rain uh, making things very difficult but for intentions of this mission I guess it is more or less assumed that the weather is nice. Um, so the regular guys will approach from the other forest. Okay. And then the engineers will have a very important task. Yeah, very important indeed. And yeah, I'm going to station these guys over here and one over here. Okay. For the planes, yeah, I just don't want, you know, these deployment things popping up every time I start a turn, so... I just deploy them right away. Alright. I just have to remember that they're there and uh, be very careful though because I'm not so sure what Air Force the Finnish side is going to bring. The Mr. Schmidt and maybe even Focke-Wolf but ME109K is definitely a given. That was, that seems to be their main backbone of the Luftwaffe or the Axis Air Force in this campaign. Okay, so we have a regular uh, entrenched to five. Yeah, look at that. I mean, they're still wearing their winter camouflage not really a good idea but i mean if it works I and mean, why uh, change it right if it ain't broke don't fix it all right so eight and eight two and six so this is i think they have a more defensive value um let me check the russian equivalent yeah seven and seven okay yeah and they are definitely better and they have two experience but even beforehand they are superior training and uh now I guess their mission of defending their homeland gives an extra boost to begin with. For now, I believe that this is fair weather and this is rather open. So I'm gonna capture all this, make it red. We at least know that there is a defender, so I can probably do an artillery check by shooting at it. Uh, if that were that simple, then I'm gonna use it every time, but sometimes, I mean, there could be some other you know, unforeseen setups here. I mean, there could be like three or three different artilleries guarding the approaches here, and then it's going to open up on this KB-85, then... Yeah, it's going to be pretty bad. All right, so one artillery available. And, uh... This is 150 mil. Uh, I guess this is K-18? No, no, not K-18, but... The one class lower than K-18s. 
or is it K1718? I'm not so sure, but I think it was K18, the best German artillery. Okay, so we know that there is a pretty big artillery defending the town. And should I actually... Yeah, I guess I need to move up with the tanks anyways. Uh, this guy can actually shoot... Well... Yeah, I think we need to move fast. Oh, and then I can damage them pretty well too. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness, they have a... I did damage them a lot though, but... They have 105 mil and this is experienced. So, wow, it has 5 range artillery, folks. Oh man, this is just a... I never seen an um, artillery leader before on the opposition, but yeah, this presents a bit of a unique challenge for us. Wrecked. Uh, doesn't sound finished at all. I mean, you just cannot help it. Uh, the Axis names are taken from the pool of German sounding names, so even though he's Finnish. Uh, influence. Okay, so no particular trait that's going to help it, such as the best in fire or anything like that. Just influence, so if he opts to upgrade in the latter part of the mission or next time I try this mission after failing it, god forbid, then it's going to be a bit different. Maybe able to upgrade into an even better artillery unit. Just talking nonsense, let's just go and see. Yeah, we have another artillery sighting, which is 105. Uh, just normal variety and it's kind of exposed out in the open i think i can make a pretty good impression well i guess pretty bad impression on these finnish soldiers with the is2s so let's check the map first and then see what i have to do here now that i have found the initial defensive lines for the finnish side all uh, right so this is is2 Messeric. i think what i'm going to do with Messeric is try to get this guy and then go straight toward the airfield and try to take the airfield and use the aggressive maneuver to take this and then this some of these guys will have to follow i hope that i have yeah 85 here and then this guy maybe after taking the airfield is going to join the central group or uh, there are different avenues of approach toward this town i think yeah there's a strip of land just like the isthmus or I get just strip of land. I mean, it's just too small to be called Istimus. So yeah, there are different ways of going about. I have to see and check back later after I have achieved my initial goal. Um, but for now, let's get the... Let's stand the defenses. Let's see. Yeah, so there was nothing here. My recon made sure of that. All right, so let's... Okay, so one destroyed. That's too bad. The finish, even though there is a press, do not move. I applaud that effort. All right. And then IS-2s will do what it was intended to do. Use aggressive maneuver to overrun these two units. Although one is not going to overrun. All right. Going to overrun this guy. And uh, I guess shoot at it from afar. Yeah, one and eight. Seven and three. Okay, that's pretty good. And the KV. Oh, okay. 85 is not going to make it, unfortunately. But uh, I can Definitely position itself. Kind of scared about it just crisscrossing all these rows. I mean, this is open field, but what if there was another defender or something nearby? Then I could definitely have been surprised. I need to select an approach that is more conservative. The guard carry can definitely see I should move this unit first. Right, so let's try to check out here. I don't see anything. So, yeah, I'm going to move my tank right here. Try to take the airfield. And air defense is going to, uh, I guess, stay right here. Yeah, stay here. The, the air force is not going to do anything substantial in the first turn, at least. The ISU 122. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good mobility. Although it could have been one hex better, but yeah, I have no complaint. And this guy is maybe able to destroy the... The artillery, yeah, it's going to be able to destroy the artillery. This is good. Good news, everyone. Zero and four, wow. That's scary. That's very scary. I really need to get the Street Fighter going there. Where's the Street Fighter? Oh, this is IS-2, so Messerik. And this is SF. Yeah, this is Street Fighter. All right, so uh, I think I will... Yeah, I guess I need to change my plans here. I just go straight into overrunning this guy. And then after that, 
it's not forest, right? No, it's not forest. After that, enter into Bipuri proper, duke it out with the uh, entrenched foes. Alright, so another overrun attack. Is it able to... No, it's end of each mobility. It's end of each movement. So getting out of forest is a bit of a scary proposition for these guys, but at least one of them has to... Oh uh, my goodness. Had to probably supply them with at least one of them with truck, but yeah, I cannot do anything right now. Uh, maybe I can bring one engineer over here, yeah. And try to take over Bisoc, Bisoc. Alright. So the rest of the tanks will follow suit. Um, maybe you should... Wow, this looks like a swamp, but it's apparently clear. Okay, so good for me. Yeah, alright. I don't think you'll be able to track it. Yeah, some of these artilleries are going to be in the dark unless the troops move and then try to spot for the artillery. So yeah, I don't think there'll be any worry of getting caught in the open in the next turn unless they show more units for our tanks to target. Okay, so yeah, it's a bit different from my what I had imagined I'm going to do, which is try to separate these units but at least for one turn, they have to stay together like a big group of happy family of rolling steel and uh, scary sight for the finish. The Red Army back then, compared to the Winter War, is a whole lot different. I mean, they are definitely more grizzled and experienced in the art of warfare. They now have more leaders to choose from because in the Winter War, it was just after Stalin had basically ransacked the uh, just drag the entire core of experienced officers and generals on the bed of burning coal and purged people left and right. I heard a lot of Finnish communists were also purged. That's why Finland had a lot of misgivings about Russia you know, in general. Of course, uh, Russia was rather miffed by Finland being so close to its second most populous city, cultural and imperial capital. So I understand, you know, that the Russians had some uh, definite anxiety over Finland being so close, but Finland also has a lot of anxiety because Russians were so close and Leningrad was so close. I mean, they constructed fortresses to defend against the Russians. The Russians, you know, demanded the fortresses to be taken away while demanding the territory that I guess the fortress was built in. And, you know, if the Russians had designs of defensive purpose there, I mean, why do they want the Finns destroy the fortresses? They can just use the fortresses themselves, use that to bolster their defenses. Yeah, so, you know, Finland definitely got the impression that the Russians were gunning for them and they had to prepare with all they had. Finland was very much alone. They're probably the loneliest nation in 1939 winter. The Scandinavian countries, while, you know, offering some support, especially Sweden, didn't really amount to much. They needed a lot of anti-tank, I think, and a lot of shells, artillery shells, to defend against the USSR, bringing like 10 to 1 advantage in terms of you know, arms or tanks. British and the French offered support, but their wars didn't really amount to anything because they had their own... Um... Oh my goodness, what the heck were they thinking? What is going on with their... That is, uh, that is something that I had never seen. A very brave Finnish artillery just charging straight ahead into this mass of steel and tanks. Okay, so I have to leave that for later, but these guys are all caught in the open. Why are they moving? Anyways, yeah, British and French were you know, offering some sort of support, but apparently Scandinavian countries didn't allow them to transfer any kind of men and arms through their countries for some reason. I guess because they wanted to keep the air of neutrality. And these British and French, of course, had their own things to their own backsides to worry about with the Germans now invading or wearing to invade Belgium into uh, France, bypassing marginal line and achieving a breakthrough at Sedan, I think. Britain being worried about the Nazi ambitions in Norway, I guess, with the, you know, the Kriegsmarine uh, brimming with confidence there try to protect the iron ore shipment from Sweden. Okay, so we now have a sighting of Panzer IV-H. Uh, wow, this is Germans. So Germans are here too. Wow, okay, so 
Maybe Finland wanted the Germans to fight the war for them in a way to get rid of the Germans first in Finland, making the Germans kind of weakened and then uh, try to strike a deal with the Soviet Union. So now when they have to fight the Germans later, then they'll have less things to worry about. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just talking probably nonsense. Yeah, but Finland definitely did pretty well, I think, in Winter War. They inflicted huge losses on the Russians. Oh wow, okay, so we have more. I mean, I didn't really need a recon here because they have all this armor set up, but yeah, I can actually do well against this guy, Humo, and I believe these are all Germans, German arms. Oh wow, okay, so we have a first sighting of the the planes too, okay. Uh, I think this, yeah, 109K of the backbone or the most manufactured plane apparently in Germany to be supplied almost in every instance of Air Force. All right. Okay, so can I aim at any of these guys? No. Nope. I uh, wish I had a artillery leader then you have been able to. All right, so guard cavalry we have to travel up there and then yeah, it's still outside the range of the towns, and I don't really see anything uh, in terms of the its spotting range. So yeah, all right. So what I can do is use IS-2 to target the most important unit here. That sir is pretty important, a pretty primary target because it has a pretty good anti-attack ability. How about going up against Hetzer one on one? Um, let's see. Oh my goodness, it's not going to end up well. So I'm going to contend myself in getting this guy the four horses 6 and 4 all right so the road is open to Bipuri on the central road and 3 and 1 okay um so IS2 can do something about it 2 and 6 not bad this is the biggest chance that I have because my artillery is out of the action unfortunately then we have Germans to strip and yeah, the Germans are basically in the thick with the Finns. Alright, I wonder how much of an influence they had over the general defensive operations or the operations in general conducted by the Finns. Probably not much, but still they were able to provide arms and I guess trainers to help the Finns to defend themselves and they defended very well indeed. Alright, okay. Oh my goodness, this is... Wow, this is a coup. I'm very impressed. Very impressed. Oh my goodness, but I'm not going to do well. Uh, <laughs> Alright. That was a bit of a mistake right after achieving a storing victory. 4 in 3. Yeah, I think I have to commit all my tanks to smash the German armor. With all the leaders here, this is aggressive attack. And I think you'll be able to overrun this guy. Both of them, in fact. Yeah. Oh no, I don't think you'll be able to overrun this guy. But let's try to damage the big artillery here first. Uh, it's gonna come later though. Because I have to wait until this guy is able to do something about um, this horse. This leader horse now. Yeah, I don't know. All the influence in the world cannot save you from this. I'm sorry. But I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know why, but this is just one of the biggest mistakes I see in the AI make in this in this LP. I mean AI for the most part was pretty competent, but yeah, I don't know what happened. I just just cannot understand. Now the road is open for the T-34s to run roughshod. And now this is probably prime for overrun as well. Yeah, okay, let's target the Stostropen. I think it has just arrived. I'm trying to help the Finns, but it's a bit too late, one turn late. Uh, okay, so it's still able to fight. So who should I target first? Yeah, let's target this guy and destroy it. And one and three, nice. Nice, very good. And 1 and 5. Sure, yeah, let's just blitz through every identifiable object. 6 and 3, another good another good result for us. Wow, this is just, yeah, just terrific. I mean, I really didn't expect the tanks to have this amount of success. 
Oh, now we have a... Uh... Yeah, that is PSW, also German. Okay. Oh, the perfect engagement. Wow. This is great. Well, I guess for this tank, which is resilience, I might have to actually travel all the way up this side. Or should I attack the PSW first? Well, let's move all my units first and then decide later. And uh, we have a uh, ace here, 109F, which is higher than K, I think. No, less than K. I don't know why they didn't give the 109K to this ace other than the 109F. 12 and 12? Yeah, pretty decent. And uh, it's, going to, it's going to run rough shot once again. Oh, okay. They have no defender in this point, or Vysok. Okay, so let's capture it. I I think there's nothing here, right? Yeah, nothing. And entrenching on the other side of the gulf. And all these different little islands, smaller than the hexes. All right. Okay, so this is clear, so I can get a pretty good shot at one of these guys. Yeah, at least this guy. Lowering the entrenchment. Wow, seven. I really need the artillery to. This is Street Fighter. I can enter Vipuri, but I'm kind of afraid of what's going to happen. I mean, you can definitely deal out the punishment, but I don't think you can take it. The most important thing right now is to get the... get the artillery ready to fire. And I think I'll be able to do that because I haven't seen any of the artillery support these units. Uh, so yeah, let's do that. And I can actually spy on what's happening. Well, nothing much. So these three infantry are the sole defenders of the objective here. Uh, let's check over here then. I don't see much. So yeah, I think I have to target the... Why am I targeting up close? I can just target across the airfield, I think. Can I do that? Or... Uh, yeah, I think I can do that. No, I can't. Okay. So luckily I didn't reveal any troops around the area, so I can cancel and move. Yeah. 0 and 7. Yeah, definitely good. Yeah, we scatter them away. And I'm going to follow with the air defense right here. The engineers. At least some of them will have to go toward the east. And these guys will follow. Yeah, follow suit. Just supporting the tanks in the middle where the line is the strongest. And this guy will protect the artillery, yes. And all the other units here. Going to be pretty busy. Uh, their busy mission for their air defense. Alright, so. Um, no need for the regulars to sweat over having to go into Vysok. They can just now travel on the road. Now that the recon has done the job for them. Alright, so the planes. The planes will just travel here. Nope. Then it's going to reveal itself to that 109k, so I cannot do that. I need to be mindful of the... The spotting ranges of the towns too, so... Okay, so I move all my units, and... I think the Finnish side is now a bit reeling after... Having committed the artillery mounted and caught in the open by the Soviet artillery, and they're just... I don't know what they're trying to do, honestly, but... The result is that they are all eliminated and it's basically Vipuri is lying bare toward the full weight of the Soviet armor. So next turn is going to be pretty interesting. Let's see if I can take Vipuri next turn. Alright, so who are you going to attack? Oh, okay. No biggie. Alright, wow. Yeah, that's impressive showing. And now protecting the airspace over Bipuri. So Finnish know that the things are rather dire now. Going to lower the entrenchment. And this guy, yeah, just arrived in the center of the town and its entrenchment is very low. And uh, okay, so I have to take care of this Stostrupen too. Yeah, it's very experienced. And Mesterik, now you have to do what you have been told to do, which is... Well, okay, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to target this guy first and yeah, alright, so revealed artillery too, nice and use my 
85s to overrun this guy. Okay, so I can travel around this guy and destroy this and then go toward Kupasari. Okay. Let's check with the... Alright, I can capture this town. That's good. And yeah, let's wait for that. This guy is aggressive attack. No, overwhelming... Overwhelming offense, right? I want my overwhelming offense guy in the front. Okay, so is there any other tank? I can travel far and wide. This guy is... yeah. Alright. I don't want to go into the forest, so... This guy, KV-85 can... Yeah, KV-85, this guy, resilience. Ah, sounds good. Sounds pretty good. 1 and 9. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. 8 and 1. Oh, destroyed it anyways. Nice. I wonder how it was able to get destroyed. I believe they had the full strength. Oh, because of 9 and 1. Alright. Okay. I want to use this anti-tank to reduce the entrenchment of this guy. Yeah, let's do that. And let's see if I can lower this guy a bit further. Uh, although I do want to destroy this guy too. Uh, yeah. There are a lot of things to destroy, folks. So, Finland. Aggressive attack. Means two more offensive rating. So, let's try to damage this guy as much as possible. Six and four, not bad. And overrun, nice. And shred this guy. Lower the entrenchment. Um, wow, only has three shells left. My goodness. Uh, Street Fighter is able to deal with these guys, I think. Join five. I am A-OK -okay with that. It's going to move? Yes, yes. And... Apparently, I cannot actually skip over this because of the zone of control here, so... Alright. Let's make some space for the infantry. We're going to end... Yeah, okay. I was nice enough to push this guy into town square. This guy will just bypass the Bipuri region and either destroy this guy across the river or target this guy which is entrenching. Um, let's see if I can... Wait a minute, this guy is actually a leader now. Mowers. Alpine training. Oh, it makes sense as far as Alpine training is concerned. The Finnish were very adept at traversing winter landscape across the forest. And yeah, it makes sense. Alright, so artillery check reveals... Yeah, okay. Yeah, it revealed another artillery. There are a lot of artillery. And at Gustav Mannerheim, one of the very able and level-headed leader um, and I think he Mannerheim actually uh, served as cavalry commander or general in the regiment of Imperial Russia I guess he was part of the white Russia the post Bolsheviks uh, of course I mean that's basically given uh, part of the aristocracy but he did very good things for Finland I think I mean um, led Finland and her forces into eventual stalemate with the Russians USSR not once but twice and was able to guarantee its sovereignty out of it all so I mean that really takes a lot of skill and panache yeah I mean I was rather impressed reading his biography researching just a bit prior to playing this mission and he was part of the Russian military so I guess he understood Russians a bit better than most and knew definitely spoke Russian I mean that's given right yeah, communication is very important. Keep in touch with the Russian delegation even though they were adversaries throughout it all and understood the Russian side and empathized with them sometimes. Knew what their aims were. Able to keep sovereignty after the war had concluded even though it was part of the Axis. Yeah, that's no mean feat. Uh, let's concentrate on... Uh, <laughs> let's concentrate on playing this game though first and leave the further extolling of the virtues of Mannerheim a bit later. Of course, there are a lot of men and qualified women who served with 
A lot of distinction. There's no question about it. Ah, okay, so I'm kind of caught here. Oh my goodness. That might be the first mistake I made. Uh, yeah, that might be the first mistake. I too use engineers to provide buffer zone. And they use the... Where's my recon? Where's my recon? Recon is right now mired here. Okay. Yeah, it's not amphibious. Hopefully it doesn't get caught in the open or in the city. Need to provide a bit of a protection zone here. And means that I need to block this bridge off against any incursions on this side. So park this guy right here. And I revealed Lavola. Oh, lovely name. For a city. Yeah. Six and four. Nice. It works. It works. And it doesn't work this... Yeah, I mean, it kind of works for my bombers to try to destroy it. But it might open my forces up, my air forces up to counterattacks. Okay, let's just see what is happening here. Zero is three. Yeah, I don't know. I'm at a point where I'm not going to even risk risk that because I have my tanks to overrun in the next turn if this guy ever tries to replace his troops. And the situation now is critical and yeah, and definitely I think the Luftwaffe is... I think the Finnish Air Force is on the prowl, so... Yeah, engineer guy. Oh, actually it's able to yeah, fight this guy. That's good, alright. One and one, alright, okay. Now I'll be able to destroy this guy, right? Nice, yeah, okay, good. And park it right here and provide OM. Okay. Well, it doesn't really matter, I think. I bring this tank with this guy, Resilience guy, to capture Kupasari. Yeah, I don't want this guy to travel down, and I think you'll be able to reveal this bomber, but I don't know. Hopefully, it's not going to come to uh, any disastrous result because of the fact that my bomber will be revealed on the edge of the map of their visibility or something. Okay, so Mannerheim, probably a lot of streets named after him in Finland. And something, you know, I learned while researching or reading about this, you know, topic. Very interesting and uh, entertaining as well. Okay, so the artillery is not going to risk anything. Just going to follow this guy. Uh, air defense is going to... Um, yeah, air defense is there to protect the artillery, but should I actually um yeah double coverage of air defense doesn't hurt. Uh, and this guy will uh I'm not going to go in the forest, yeah, just stay here. Alright, so now the turn is over. I was able to capture Bipuri, uh Bivorg now. Change its name or something. And we have revealed a few artillery still, uh, I guess the second or uh, third line of defense that the Finnish or the Axis Finnish Germany alliance have set up. So far, no big problems. Uh, some tanks have taken damage, but infantry remains pretty intact. The bombers have scored the first kill. Yeah, so far, no problems at all. Yeah, things are going swimmingly, but. Oh yeah, archery! Damn it! Oh my god! Okay. Oh dear lord! Displace! Displace! <laughs> displace! Oh, okay. I was able to fight pretty well there. Wow! These Finnish are not kidding around. They're like hardcore crack troops. Almost every one of them. Oh my goodness, 20. Oh man, 20 years of experience combined. Uh, I don't know. And yeah, definitely took some damage here. I was trying to protect the tank. Uh, maybe it didn't really need to be protected. Um, can you shoot? No. Could have been being more aggressive with the artillery, but... Now I know that there's artillery nearby within four hex here so 
Yeah, so 4 hex means that it can be anywhere around here. Maybe it's moving once again. Um, yeah, Street Fighter, can you dish out some of the damage here? Okay. Wow. Okay, so Street Fighter definitely conquered that street. So, let's see. Is the uh, recon still lagging? Yeah, still lagging. Oh, wow, but is it to reveal in its last hex of movement the entirety of the defense of Cross the River? Uh, impassable. Yeah, okay. Alright, so this guy will need to get the heck out of the dodge. Yeah, engineer. Too bad. And my defense was not able to do its job. And this guy is, wow, alright. Can any of you move? T3485 is able to target this artillery. Uh, it's going to be uh, under fire everywhere. So let's take care of the artillery in the north first. And this is earmarked for the advance through Vipuri. So I have to make sure that I don't move that unit. And this guy, yeah, as you can see, it's out of ammo. So this guy will be useless for the turn. Yeah. Alright, so let's... Let's see, there are a couple of infantry defenders. Oh, wow, alright. Nobody's home. Uh, it may be pretty bad if it attacks here, so I'm going to just move and try to support the guys. And with the... Ah, okay. My tanks really did not have to move all the way here because the recon did the work. Okay, that's good. Let's try to see. Yeah, I can damage the infantry somewhat. 1 in 7, 1 in 7. Let's aim at this guy. No matter. Except for. And can you finish them off? Yes, good. That is a 1 2 punch. That just developed out of the blue. I really didn't have any idea. But lucky for us. 5 and 3, not bad. Yeah, well, some of these tanks might have gotten a leader, but I'm not so sure. Um, we have 4. I think I have 4 leaders. But then. Um, yeah, this guy is not really entrenched. Zero and five. Let's get going then. Six and four, not bad. I can overrun. Oh, I can overrun. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. Maybe this guy can overrun. No, unfortunate. Okay. I don't want to earmark some of these T-34s to attack this group. And even though I have still like 11 turns left, I want to make sure that I move all my tanks first. But then, um, yeah, I think anti-tank will be able to do pretty well here. Yeah, why not? 1 and 4? Yeah, get rid of this guy first. Destroy, uh, okay. That's good. And can I attack some of these guys? No, maybe this guy should be a supporting force. Uh, let's move this guy across. Now this, uh, in no, no, attack the artillery first. Uh, okay, so let's move this guy, the, the healthiest of them all here. And I'm going to move this guy here. To be able to attack this entrenched Finnish troop. Use this guy, oh man. I can probably afford to travel a bit farther. Well, this is not really the optimal way of doing things, but... Still 1 in 5, the same kind of result, regardless. Ah, okay, so... Another artillery. They have a lot of artillery, holy crap, and they will finish. Definitely Finland wants a lot of artillery to defend. No question about it. This guy will have to rest for one turn. This guy will just take care of the defenses here. Nice. Okay. How about this guy? Nice. All right. So we're just skipping over. And also this guy as well. Then I can shoot over and then this guy for three run, overrun, romp. Very good. Very good result for this aggressive attack guy. 
Oh wow, alright, so there was some buzz activity. Uh, I don't want to move my infantry right now with all the territory is about. If I damage this guy though, I might be able to... Even two? Wow, yeah, it took some damage. Okay, that's unfortunate. Let's see, he's able to reach this guy, but not this... I think I just moved this guy right here then. A determined defense guy so I think he'll be able to survive at least one turn. What am I talking about? It has to survive a lot of turns but at least for one critical turn where we are trying to produce a bridgehead over uh, this impassable river bringing the breaching guys who have been useless basically. So yeah I have to move with Bandon there I guess. Um, just let the engineer pass through. Uh, yeah okay. And is there any Wow, okay, definitely next time, truck. Make sure I bring some trucks along with the engineers or the regulars even. Alright, protect the... Okay, so if I stay here, it's going to come under attack, so I just put right now. And the tanks, yeah. Just follow suit. Provide, I guess, with a buffer. No, I don't think it really matters, but yeah, just put double lapping air defense in the central region, so to speak. These engineers, uh, I guess they're really not needed because I have taken all the positions. Guard cavalry is going to maybe protect this point after the recon leaves Kupasari. And the engineers will just follow suit here. Yeah, and try to advance. Uh, I think you can advance a bit farther. No, yeah, this is right. Good enough. Alright, so can I destroy this? some of these guys? They're the clumped together, so... The Air Force is just going to stay over like here and I don't know, maybe just follow suit. Yeah, just follow. Just follow the leader. Uh, like here, I guess. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. I mean, after, you know, intercepting one plane, then this is not an ace, so protection will be not there. So I have not left anything. I can check. Yeah, basically that's it for another turn. Well, this turn, well, I guess the turn that the Finnish had prior to this turn was pretty scary because my tanks were damaged by the influx or the troops basically uh, trying to mob it. I was able to survive, but it was not really good news for the infantry that were blasted with the artillery across uh, into Bipuri. Despite their discretion, uh, sort of a scorched earth tactic or something, they're just trying to... I guess they have evacuated all the Finnish people anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It's just buildings. I mean, they can build buildings after the war. And um, yeah, they basically shot into their own town and damaged our infantry. But, you know, I guess retribution for taking the town. All right, so 10 turns left. Okay. Yeah, shooting at the tanks. Yep. The tanks are basically bearing all the brunt of the damage that the... Finish artillery can dish out there too, but luckily enough, there's no bombers. Yeah, it's not really working out for the Finns here against the mighty steel of the Russian tanks. Okay, so this recon is able to travel. Well, I think if he can, maybe even try to attack the infantry here, but uh, yeah, it's a bit of a struggle now. Oh my god, no. <laughs> oh dear lord all right i admit i got caught oh wow it was able to destroy it though anyways nice wow that's surprising but yeah okay so should i commit this guy toward the roping up of the infantry here or should i try to blast through Use Tila. Yeah, plus two use Tila. Let's blast through this objective. He's going to be another way open, open field toward the last objective. Yeah, okay, so I can definitely achieve a fast victory if I'm lucky. If the first few turns of this mission is any indication, I think I'm pretty bullish on the prospect that I'm going to uh, complete this mission in flying colors. Flying red colors, I guess. Uh, Red banner. 
But yes, okay, so entrenchment is not down as much as I like. This regular guy eventually is going to arrive in La Vola. Yes, I'm very sure of it. Artillery check. I think there was an artillery here, so I don't want to get surprised once again. So, I'm going to use my recon. Yeah, there's an artillery there. So, this is the task for an anti-tank. Because even after having moved, it can actually affect some pretty good damage uh, against this artillery. Okay, not strong enough to destroy that, right? That's a Mission for the aggressive IS-2. Nice. This is what I need IS-2 for, but unfortunately it stopped. Okay, too bad. So these three tanks will be able to... We'll have to take on Yustila. Um, these guys can shoot, I think. Yeah, just roll the entrenchment has only 5 strength, so I'll be able to maybe rush with this overstrength leader with aggressive attack. Yeah, lowering the entrenchment. Now 4. Now at 4. Uh, let's see if I can overrun. Yes, I can overrun. So Good. Alright, so we are going across Eustilla. The ladies first. Ah, alright, so we are linking up across... Yeah, this is a really fast development. And this guy can now... Oh, almost there, but not enough. Um, there's also the problem with the artillery. Yeah, I do feel a bit helpless in this regard. Luckily, my one of my engineers already made it across the river into the breach jet, so I guess that's pretty encouraging. Air defense. These guys yeah, have no other... Yeah, it's going to be in the way. Because now, these guys are trying to make things difficult. Um, yep. Point three. Let's expand upon the bridgehead. Bring in more tanks. Oh, okay, nice. Destroy it outright, and now let's go into the unknown. Let's check the weather first. Um, excuse me. Fair weather, nice. Bright and sunny in Finland. I'm able to use the spotting range of the recon, the most effective manner. And these tanks will now try to maybe cross? I don't know if we can actually cross here. Yeah, I guess it can cross. 3 and 3? Yeah, it's turning away. Hmm, interesting. But this guy can... This guy can move, yeah, along with the, the tanks. This guy can barely make it across, but yeah, it's going to come under fire. Yeah, the Finns had definitely set up a pretty good defense here. The killing field, so to speak, the zone of defense. Defensive zone that the Germans have used so well in the last mission against me. I was just caught by the zone of control left and right and not be able to use my tanks. And not be able to deliver the full brunt of the force. Uh, surround a certain units such as the Yak, Tiger or Panther that scared me to no end. The Finns are doing something similar now with the artillery, so the infantry is kind of stuck here. Before I can, before I do something about this artillery, I can use my bombers, but I'm not really that. I'm not going to risk it if it's not a critical uh, situation. All right, so the infantry is going to keep guarding Vipuri and entrench itself a bit, and this guy will just retire toward this town. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see how many requisition units. I have a pretty good amount. Pretty fair amount. 782. Yeah, okay, so let's just build upon that and then see if I can make things work. 
getting the most amount of prestige you know for upgrading purposes i believe that there will be some units uh, coming our way soon but let's not get ahead of ourselves that kind of thinking has interesting tendency to making things miserable forcing me to go back on my word and so on all right so this guy yeah 25 mil 25 mil so yeah i don't want to risk it this guy might move up then uh maybe it's going to reinforce then this guy will not be able to see but if i damage this then to what end i mean it's going to buy us a turn for the regulars to travel across this railroad but yeah this guy will definitely attract it here first then yeah it's going to be the end for this artillery so i'm going to just be on the safe side and be on the safe side and just yeah make it stay right here okay so i have moved everything okay uh, yeah this guy will just defend no problems for finland trying to cross across yeah I'd be rest assured on that front all right so a couple of interesting engagement here i don't know how the this tech now surprised we'll be able to do against the uh, full strength regular uh, experience regular yeah let's see yes yes good Oh man, only suppressed to 5, but yeah, definitely did sap his strength though. Oh, impressive, okay. Uh, the planes have gone away. I can move this guy now. And maybe uh, get this guy to protect this point, Kupasari. I don't think really it's going to amount to much. And now, this guy will be able to follow uh, and then try to track these guys down. Let's see if I can see what is up first. Don't really see anything. Yep. Maybe it's going to be a suppressed. Maybe. Oh no, actually, no, it has a. You can actually cross this lake. It's a pretty shallow lake, I guess. Alright, overrun. Nice. Got a lot of experience for this tank. Now, finally, you can actually make a move, but now it has only one shell, so. There. Yeah. And this guy will... Well, maybe the recon can capture it. And see what is up here first. Nothing much. Okay. Now don't go into the city. Just stay on the outskirts. And the uh, engineer is going to take a roundabout way. Over this area. And this tank... Yeah, with Street Fighter. Does it really matter whether it's going to be in the city or the forest? Uh, maybe it's going to matter. Only in the city, so... Infiltration tactics is where it's at when it comes to the hex that is not city. So where is my other recon? Oh, stuck here. Okay, so that's a bit of a mistake on my part. Not trying to use my recon on the forefront of the line. But we have finally arrived here, the last objective. So I have taken everything. Yeah, pretty clean sweep across the map. And uh, I want to take this too. But if I have a lot of prestige saved up, maybe I can just concentrate, secure this place, and then go try to gun for these two remaining supply points. So the most important thing, objective comes first. Artillery check. Wow, yeah, destroyed it. One and four, one and five, one and five. So how... Is there any support? Can I actually support this guy? 1 and 3, 1 and 3. Yeah, I think it's worthwhile. 15 and 12 is no slouch. Wow, okay. So during 5. Actually, a leader too. German leader. And let's see what's so special about him. Mahler. Inf oh, wow, okay. Infiltration tactics. So this guy could be pretty dangerous. It does ignore the entrenchment, but more i guess effective against infantry now okay now i have to cross here and do a bit of a yeah just reveal the artillery where the artillery is all right okay during three so i did cross yeah it does remain a uh, thorn in my side 
Okay, let's try to seal it up. Or uh, maybe there's an artillery, I'm kind of afraid. Although it didn't really reveal itself, if I move my engineer that close to the objective, I can actually win the mission right now. Wow. My goodness. Uh, yeah. Just, I guess you just travel first. Yeah, because it's kind of crowded. I mean, you know, it can sort of get crowded and mired. So I don't really see anything across the this channel or river. Now, can I move? Yeah, I can actually make a move here. Ah, oh, man. Yeah, I'm kind of stuck here. This guy needs... These shells. My goodness. If I brought more IS-2s, it might have been problematic because of the... I mean, this tank will be just out of shell in like no time and has to just, just to spend a turn rearming. I wonder what the firing rate for these guys were, but definitely uh, half the rate of the KV-85s. So, I mean, this guy is a frontline guy that is going to just break uh, everything in each path, but after that, I think its usefulness is kind of drops. Wow, during 2. That's definitely good. Where were you all this time? I mean, these guys are damaging finally some of the planes. Tribes due to the experience gained, but yeah, I mean, this is a pretty encouraging. Yeah. Very nice. And how many shells does this guy have? Only one. Alright, so next time I can actually move. That's good. That's encouraging. A lot of encouraging signs here. Uh, so this guy is kind of damaged. Uh, only six though, so still able to fight pretty well against my yak and you know all the uh, yak nine yeah three and three it's not going to really go well for me because they have a uh, 109 f sinking around as well so yeah so i'm gonna leave that there just in case that i can um if there is a chance for me to choose and pick apart some of the units and scavenge for any weak units that I can target then these bombers will be there and be ready yeah and this guy will be protecting them as best as possible and kind of getting close to the last objective because I have hopes that some of these units while trying to protect the last uh, last point is going to get caught and out of the sun way yeah it's gonna get caught right here because he's gonna travel from this side to the airfield. Yeah, I'm right in the way, so let's see what happens. Uh, but it's going to all be not if uh, one of these guys try to attack uh, these tanks. Of course, um, you know this is one of the visible units. One of the only visible units, I think. Then it's going to reveal the plane, so I'm going to take account of that fact. And move that plane a bit closer to the bombers. I mean, if it doesn't work, then fine. All right, this guy, um, I really want to move this guy down here, but uh, yeah, how far can you travel from here to here? This guy is, yeah, this guy has plenty of fuel. Okay. Yeah, we have to travel. This guy, we have to travel. Um, I have no idea. Hmm. I have no idea. This guy will have to stay once again. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Okay, next turn is able to move. Okay. So, alright. Okay, so next turn is going to be... Finally. Nope, a bit too close. Ah, what the heck. It's resilient or determined defense unit, so... Okay. Oh man, it just passed. Oh man, I should have parked my plane right there. Oh man, I just... Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was a bit too conservative in my maneuver. Uh, a bit too bashful. Uh, if I parked my... If I not parked, but if I just stationed my plane right here, then it would have been surprised. I cannot take anything to chance right now. During 4, where did that Panzer go? Oh, yeah, there it was an artillery. <laughs> okay. Scary development. One in fire, let's keep damaging this guy. Um, can this guy actually move? No, nope. has to refill. And this guy can... Well, no, I don't think... I just yeah, concentrate on my fire here and try to get this guy off. I think, I think they're purchasing units here. Um, maybe not. They're all named, so... Alright. Let's try to attack you. Three and four. Um... Four and two. Alright, it's not running. Still has a pretty good shot. Let's park over here and... Well... Let's see, I can use my IS-2 to destroy that infantry, I think. Or even use my bombers to... Yeah, I think I can use my bombers to destroy it. Ah, uh, it's a bit of a gamble, but... Tank can overrun it, probably. Yeah, tank can overrun it, that's good. Can you travel? Yes, it can travel across... And get this artillery. Nice, nice. Three and four. All right. Out of yeah, it's out of. That's good. Uh, travel right here. This bomber. You know, this guy can move as well. And protect the artillery here. Yep. Ah, oh, finally, now this guy can make a move. But I think it'd be too late. This guy will just keep each place. Um, yeah, I have to go back on my word that engineers or breaching engineers will be useless because engineers could have definitely served a, served a purpose here in trying to cross these rivers. I've become a very variable trying to capture this point but these tanks will be able to drive down but I don't know how many turns it would take I just have to finish these guys off as fast as possible of course there's a plane here nearby I have to keep the formation of my air force away from the planes all right so I has two well it's, why don't you just travel as far as possible engineers will travel as well yep it's an open field now. Okay, so it's outside of the range, but I just wanna or on the side of caution. And this guy as well, we travel, travel, travel. Everything is open now. Everything's open. The half strength tank is able to make a move. And this guy's well, this guy's a bit slow now. Yeah, just stay here and guard cavalry is able to move pretty quick. So Rear guard action, yeah. Never lonely with a tank around. Okay, so the bomber, we just... Well, I guess there's no other choice but to try to defend it. Because I wasn't able to finish this guy. Um, so... Right two. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I wasn't able to finish this artillery, so all my air force is now visible. I can bring in a rental airplane, I guess, to try to protect the... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not going to be that useful, but... Um, am I actually placing my unit in the right... Yeah. It's not going to serve us anything, aside from the fact that it's an emergency kind of purchase to protect the bombers. You know, be effective, at least try to survive for one turn. And this guy will just stay, yeah, just stay. Alright, so let's see what happens. 
Oh, okay. This ops to attack this infantry. Right, right. Okay. Wow, pretty good showing. There's a very stirring inspired attack by the German regular that wakes me up. Uh, to try to finish these guys once and for all. And all of these guys are out of ammo. My goodness, that is not good. But IS-2 is there to save the day. Alright. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Could have been pretty bad. Yeah, that could have been very bad. Indeed. Okay, one and eight. Get off. Get out of there. Okay, good. Alright. So... This guy will also... Cannot travel right now. Travel right here. Yeah. Let's see what is up. The recon can be pretty useful because it can travel pretty far and then lower the entrenchment despite what kind of attacks or results it ends up with. And out of shells, just at the right time. My my. That is uh... <laughs> okay. Alright. Nice. Destroyed. Now, can I actually make these guys pay? Join three, maybe. All of a sudden, I'm bold enough to maneuver or use the infantry or the bombers to expedite the operation. Oh, okay, suppressed so right into another bomber. Okay. And now this guy can run away. Or here, I guess. And finish this guy off, then we'll be able to camouflage our air force. Nice! This guy was the experienced one, right? Yeah, this guy was the experienced one. I didn't want to use the green one to destroy it because I need all my experience for my Yak-9 that I kept from the beginning of the this campaign. And the tank is losing its strength somewhat. A bit of a cause for worry. Yeah. Two and three. No, not gonna happen. Okay, good. Now IS-2 is going to do what IS-2 was upgraded to do, or paid to do. Destroy this too. <laughs> Wasn't... Okay, well at least uh, combined suppressed and destroy unit is 7, so... I don't know, I can win this mission still, wow. 6 turns left, let's drive up the prestige. Yeah, okay, protect the tank. Okay, so I can bring my artillery to bear on this. Yeah, I'm not gonna move it while the Stug is still alive. Ah, uh, maybe I should just be a bit bold for once. I think the airplane is going to... the planes are going to probably attack. Or just stay above the sky or something if it... I mean, I don't know, maybe it's going to mount some air deterrent attack or uh, yeah, going to strafe through my armor to be just irritating. I don't know if it's going to actually see what is happening down here, although it, yeah, a lot of buzzing about. Definitely. Let's keep here. Nice. Oh, this tank. Okay. Well, you are the rear guard. Resilient guy. So we just stay near one of the objective and be done with it. Alright. This guy finally moved. Yeah, needs a truck. I think the Americans supplied some of the trucks that the Soviet Red Army used. Studebaker? GM supplied some of the trucks. The Russians liked it because they had high clearance and could actually travel through the mud. And they liked it so much that some of them were used to mount the Katyusha rocket. So you can definitely see the American-Soviet Union uh, sort of collaboration going on there and some of the hybrid weapons, I guess, nationality-wise. You know, cropping up 
Um, I don't know about AS2s, but yeah, the Russian American Corporation definitely produced some very interesting results. Not to mention all the food stuff like bacon and... Oh, okay. Well, how was he able to track it though? Oh, maybe because, yeah, I made a mistake there. He was able to track it pretty well. Well, okay. Well, you're right in the crosshairs for another two damage, hopefully. Wow, three damage. Now my yak can do something. Finally, my yak that I babied all the time can be a force we reckon with. One and one. Wow, look at this powerhouse. Oh no, I used the other one. Damn it. I used the other yak instead of this yak. Jesus. Ah, oh, no matter. Okay, second chance for you, Zero and Seven. Destroy it, please. You're paid to do this. Use your shell wisely. Four and three. Come on. You have to do better than that. Yeah, finally, okay. Alright. Going four. This is a right about now when Germans have probably second thoughts about you know helping their Finnish friends defend its land against the Russians. Alright, so the airport is clear. The airport is clear. Now I can travel all the way down and see if there is another Yeah, okay, so there's cavalry, Finnish cavalry. No, this is German cavalry. Alright, let's suit up. Let's get Yeah, let's get all the armament going. Load up for the last bit of push. And I can definitely see highly entrenched regular guy with a pretty good experience. Well, trying to make a crossing here is no... Yeah, it's going to be a slog. Yeah, I don't want to bog down too much the last few remaining turns. I think I can be ensured a brilliant victory unless some disastrous things happen, so... Make sure I just bring all the powerful tanks up on the front and then try to cross this river and see if I can in the last three turns be able to destroy this and of course all the air force will have to be involved with that kind of uh, um, endeavor. So now I can prevent these guys from having too much, too many entrenchment or too much entrenchment. This guy will just stay put. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's just make it quick. Yeah, I need to direct these guys. Um, I'll see what happens, but I just stationed myself here first. I don't want to sacrifice my air force needlessly. Yeah, used my inexperienced green yak to attack the stricken axis plane. In a bit of a trouble. This guy has one more shot left. Okay, all right. Look at this. This is a tasty morsel of uh, artillery trying to cross the river. I should just leave it. No, maybe I should move it. Oh my. Let's see. Two experience. Not really happy with uh, you know moving it while under the plane, so I just keep it. These guys remove. Move across. They put, they put, and this guy move down. Okay, all right. So the race to the finish, or getting the most amount of points. All right, during two. Oh my God, no! Ah, oh, you. Oh, okay. So he was able to defend pretty well there. Not there though. Uh, he's trying to defend, yeah. It's too late for you, though. Uh, yeah, pretty late for you. Yeah, we can see. Oh, wow. They purchased the armor here. It's a bit of a different story. A Stuk. Finnish Stuk. A rarity. But my infantry can do pretty well against this Stuk because it's in the city. And my Street Fighter can do even better. Where's my Street Fighter? This is my street fighter. Oh, it's right there. Fuel. Oh my goodness. Okay. 
the yak can do some damage, right? Like, good yak. Finally can do some damage here, yeah. One and one? Come on. Oh, well, I make you get lucky. Oh, yeah, it was lucky. Good. And gain the experience. Nice. And this guy will just get the heck out. Get the heck away from the place. I need you for reassignment. More prestige in the last mission, or I think it's the last mission next time, or the second last mission. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, where are you trying to go? You're gone. And wow. Very good. Alright. Now aggressive maneuver. Maybe able to reach this guy. Nope. And it's out of... Damn it. Okay. You are stranded. You are... St well, basically, yeah. Yep. Had to stop for a few turns to refuel all the tanks and stuff. Hope it was worth it. The Red Army is crossing. This guy is also crossing, but I don't know if this is going to be as useful. The resilience guy, wow, it filled up all each experience bars. Alright, let's make it quick. Let's just not waste a lot of time here. So yeah, I can use my bombers now because I think this guy, as hard as it might try, is not going to be able to destroy my uh, bombers. So yeah, let's get going here. Unless Finland has another like squadron of planes hidden away for the last amount of effort against the Red Army. And he's kind of damaged now, so yeah, 25. So yeah, my Air Force was able to you know pick its way, pick apart its way once again. Yeah, alright. Right now, I don't really have any problems with moving now. Like a cadre of uh, anti-air safeguarding this artillery as if it's a bodyguard or something. Yeah. I guess I did make a good decision of reassigning the Katusha, although back on my mind... Wow! I would love to... Um, I would love to bring in like five Katrushas or something for that, you know, spectacle of rockets flying everywhere. But maybe I should, maybe I could do that if I had more than 2,500 prestige. Um, yeah, let's do that. If I have 2,000, more than 2,500 prestige, I'm going to bring in five Katrushas. How about that? I think I am able to. Oh, wow. Is it raining just on the cusp of victory? No. Why can I not shoot at this guy? Oh, I can shoot at this guy. Good. Let's finish this guy off. Nice! This Yak-9 has proved itself uh, more than I expected it to. Although it did require some, uh, some help from the air defense. But air defense, I'm really happy with how the air defense was able to, uh, you know, exert itself. Or was able to accord itself. It's actually going up right in front of my eyes, you know, damaging enemy 109s to a cliff of 2 and suppressing them in overlapping coverages to a tune of 5. Yeah, I'm really happy with how um, they all develop. Really good to see. Alright, let's get all these points now. Alright, no more playing around. Yeah, they're all like... suppressed. Uh, I think I can overrun some of them. Ah, uh, this guy is out of... Damn it, yeah, this this guy runs out of shells readily. It didn't even lose its uh, strength because they're overrunning everywhere and then shooting as if it was artillery. Impressive, I mean, to say the least. Turn 4, good. Now you overrun. And they try to attack this guy. Hopefully it's gonna work well. 
Ah, uh, okay. Can I bring in on the bomber? No, I don't think so. Can I actually... Can I move with this tank? Yeah, I can. Oh, wow, that's good. Alright, I don't care about, you know, destroying this unit outright. Let's just capture this guy. Nice. And how are the turns? I have... Wow, I have many turns left still. Okay, let's capture all these points. Now I can just wait. And uh, yeah, alright. Just have to organize a bit. Uh, just in case. Let's organize, organize. Yeah, this guy will stay. I think this guy will try to take back the town of Vilayoki. So I need to be prepared for that. And this guy will just stay in the forest. In the forest. This guy we just stay with this guy. Right, right, okay. So we are almost there. We're almost there folks. Uh, this guy. Yeah. yeah, stay there. Everybody stay there. Why don't I just press this? Did they purchase a unit or something? Nope. Uh okay, so more experience for my bombers, I guess. Wow, this one is going up as well. And I bring in victory. Oh, I certainly didn't count on that fact that there was actually uh I I just didn't remember. Oh well. I mean it is a victory anyways, and uh, I think I have one more turn. I guess if I captured that last point then it would have meant under 150 prestige points. But anyways, I uh yeah, that was it. Brilliant victory for us, and uh, I guess the streak of brilliance continues for General Mysteric. Didn't lose a single unit, that's pretty good, although some of the tanks have lost its strength, but yeah, uh, all in all, a very successful campaign. <laughs> Comrade General, <laughs> please, come in. Some caviar? The occupation of Viborg has broken the will of the fascists. The Finns have been abandoned by their German allies and have sued for peace. Finally, a proper socialist government has been installed. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent work. Uh, Finland has... If I was to achieve a brilliant victory here, then Finland would have basically capitulated. Uh, you know, receive all the Soviet Union's demands of installing a socialist government and basically give up its sovereignty. So it's not a good news for Finnish people. Honestly, I don't think I really like the result of this. <laughs> you know, I mean, Finland really wasn't that ag aggressor. I think they did try to attack, try to realize the, you know, greater Finland or something, but uh, after they have failed trying to get out of the trenches and, you know, attack the Russians directly, I think they were just content in keeping the boundaries. Uh, they were before 1940, but after the Russians basically uh, pushed the issue and once again attacked uh, with renewed focus and vigor, now a uh, part of the, the Great Patriotic War, thinking, you know, Finland is no different from the Axis that caused them so much misery. Uh, Finland really had to, I mean, the red line for them, I think, was that, you know, they cannot see to all the demands. There is some opinion that Stalin really didn't care for Finland, that he was just content in getting a kind of a treaty. I don't think that was the case. I think he wanted to uh, get Finland as part of the sphere influence USSR, just like when it was during the imperial times. Yeah, so the fight was on in the continuation war. The Russians pushed back. I think they captured Viborg, but then they were stopped to a standstill because Finland had a string of victories and the Russians couldn't use Estonia, it's still deeply mired in that region. Uh, and Finland really had to take the window opportunity to try to make them understand that, you know, attacking Finland directly and trying to continue this struggle uh, in trying to subjugate Finland is not really worth the cost of man. I think Russians lost already uh, around 800,000 men by the time the war ended. So, I mean, it was easy for Russians to accept that, but they still demanded heavy price. Uh, I think they demanded like Eastern Karelia and all the lands that the Finland took after 1940. They also demanded like 300 million dollars or reparation. So it was pretty heavy, but you know, Finland was able to keep its flag and was able to continue to being a you know, vibrant democratic nation. So. 
all in all, uh, I guess it ended up pretty well for Finland. And of course, the Mannerheim is a very big part of that process. But now, I mean, brilliant victory for Red Army here means that Helsinki would have caved in. It would have been a part of USSR, just like Estonia and Lithuania and all the other Baltic regions that have been conquered by the Red Army and uh, at the behest of the uh, Stavka or the Kremlin uh, installed socialist regimes uh, under the communist doctrine. And also one of the demands the Soviet Union wanted to extract from Finns were they had to fight Germans, their allies, while demobilizing. So I think there was a war called Lapland War that happened right after. Uh, when the Germans were refusing to actually evacuate by the set time, I think it was like around two weeks or something. And the uh, Finns had to fight the Germans and to kick them out of the country, so to speak, through, I guess, Norway or Sweden. And that was pretty awkward because, you know, just a few months before they were fighting side by side and Germans, you know, having the guarantee that if they supply the troops and weapons that Finland is not going to ask for a separate peace, but Finland just I don't think they went back on their word, but they used some very, very sneaky method in order to sue for peace with Russians in a rather politically acceptable manner or maneuver. So, yeah, it was kind of awkward that the Germans were now facing, uh, I mean, they were, I guess, not chummies, they're not really allies, I mean, more or less frenemies, but now they're definitely enemies. And I think the Germans were rather uh, hurt by the sequence of events. Anyways, yeah, excellent, excellent work. So KVR, right? Yeah, finally it's General Messerich's you know, prestige uh, in the eyes of Stalin or the, the higher up that he now has a taste of KVR and it's going to be the long road down for him, uh, long road to downfall for him because if you taste KVR, and I personally have to admit that I have never tasted KVR, kind of probably salty. Yeah, if you taste KVR once, then it's, you cannot never go back. You have to basically subsist upon it and have to clamor for it, it's like a drug and it's going to be a crack in the armor of the socialist doctrine and education that Maastricht was deeply, deeply uh, indoctrinated in. The caviar was the downfall of General Maastricht and yeah, he has one more mission to do, uh, I think. So let's go into, yeah, let's try and see if I can actually gain a prototype unit. I was forgetting about it because I was so successful in this mission, but a prototype unit would definitely not hurt. Wow, okay. Silo. Ah, Silo, yes, just as of the Berlin. <laughs> the historical dialectic has once again proven its inevitable truth. We stand at the gates of the fascist capital. It is your task, comrade general, to destroy this nest of vipers so that the Soviet people's sacrifices will not have been pointless. Once the enemy along the Zeilau Heights has been eradicated, the road to the fascist capital will be open. Good luck, comrade. Good luck, comrade. So historical dialectic for what it is has once again proven the truth. Well, I, I don't know what the truth is. Inevitable truth that the Red Army is at the gates of the Berlin. And the Silo Heights is probably the last stand for the Germans, I guess, where they can mount any kind of semblance of organized defense, aside from street to street, block by block. What do you call that? The section of the building where people hid out. Uh, was it? Yeah, I mean, you know, room to room fight. I mean, aside from that, this is a foreseeable Probably the last section of the ground where the Germans could put up defense resembling any kind of organized effort. The Russians are at the gates of Berlin, uh, finally. And now we are going to spend all our uh, effort in order to smash the defense and make the door open for some other guy to, I don't know, maybe Zukov or Konyev can uh, just take over and try to conduct their operations in Berlin. All right, let's see if the historical dialectic has once again proven its inevitable truth of giving me a prototype unit to bring into the last mission to, you know, make it worth it. Ah, no prototype unit, folks. You stingy bastard. Is it RNG or something that I don't get the prototype unit? LA-7. Okay, I get a upgraded plane. Su-100. 
better than ISU 122, it seems, in terms of anti tank uh, hard attack rating. IL 10, yes, finally, very respectable bomber that is going to vindicate Soma stringing my bombers, however powerless and helpless along. And as you could have seen, he was able to destroy that Stug pretty well. Now with IL-10 upgrade, they are able to do much better. Trying to target, you know, the odd German armor. I don't know what kind of armor that they're going to bring uh, in defense of Berlin, but certainly it's going to be very ferocious defense that they're going to put up. IS-3, the prince or the king of the, what is it, Josef Stalin tank. So basically, exclamation point to the development of tanks that kind of surprised the Western Allies, I think. It's impressive, impressive rating across the board, except for the shell. Basically the same amount of ammo or the firing rate of the IS-2. Well, I'm happy, but prototype unit might have been pretty good. I mean, I think there's some other unit outside the scope of this campaign. Like, uh, I think there was another plane that came a bit later. LA-9 was probably the final plane to be introduced. And it definitely would have been a, more than a match. Well, it kind of a match for the Falcon Wolf. And even a match if it's experienced against the ME-262. Uh, maybe not, but yes, it might have been definitely better for our Air Force. 16 and 14, definitely no slouch. And let's see what kind of... Alright, so 1844. Yeah, pretty good amount of prestige. I think I can upgrade some of these tanks to IS-3s to show you guys some grand Soviet tank. Of course, I am uh, perilously short on artillery, but IL-10s will definitely ease that requirement. And yeah, got us pretty good uh, base here, opportunity for us to um, yeah, see to the end of the our Air Force. And wow, okay, some of them even got a experience air defense. Pretty successful there for them. All right, so did I actually get another leader here? Oh, I think I actually got another leader. No, this is Masaryk. Okay, excuse me. Yeah, no other leader appearing. So yeah, it's not over 2,500. So I don't know if I will bring like five Patricias, but I don't know. Anything can happen if I am confident after upgrading all my units that this is uh, enough to go into Silo Height. Then I'm going to bring some uh, some Katrushas. Yes. All right. This has been another episode in General Messerich's Onward to Berlin campaign. And now we are at Berlin. Almost. Yeah, it's going to be a firefight to last ages, hopefully, in the next episode. So once again, thank you for watching this episode. And until next time, please stay tuned.